Today I'm going to carry on uh, what we're talking about, water supply and water demand. And we're going to start to look how those interact and how we get places in the world and places in different countries that are water surplus and water deficit. And I'm going to get, explain to you what those terms mean. So water surplus is where the supply of water is higher than the demand for the water. I've drawn a picture at the top here to show an example of that, where we have this giant reservoir. Uh, so there's a large supply and there's only one person needing that water. And therefore we have a surplus. It meets the needs of that person quite easily. So some of the places uh, on the earth we would find... Um, a surplus or at least a positive water b balance um, are places like Canada, uh, Scandinavia, Brazil and the DRC, uh, Congo regions. And these regions, the reason why they have a positive water balance, so more supply than demand, is largely because they are, are areas of high precipitation. They have uh, lots of kind of rainfall or big stores. So if we're in Scandinavia, they have uh, lots of glaciers um, that store a lot of that supply of water. But also there'll be areas that are remote and have low population. And because of that, because they've got that combination of high precipitation and, and small um, demand, they're going to have lots of water because they've got lots of it being supplied, but not a lot of it being taken away and used by people. Water deficit is the opposite of uh, surplus. This is where the demand is higher than the supply. And again, in this picture at the top, I've got a really tiny little puddle here, but then I've got six or seven hour people trying to use it. So therefore their, their needs are not being met by that small supply. So if I look across the world, there are areas where we have deficit. The Sahara, Australia, parts of India, also in southwest of the USA. The reason why um, in the Sahara and uh, Australia we would probably get a deficit is because there's such low precipitation. These are deserted areas and therefore um, the supply is very low. So we are getting um, not much rain put there. So there's not much water they can actually um, use. But if I look at here at the southwest of the USA and India, this is... Um, partly because they've got um, at points lower supply, but largely due to the fact that there's a population uh, that is uh, large. Uh, in India, it's growing. In the southwest, we've got places like San Francisco and California, where the population is large and also there's rising development. So people are needing more water because living standards are going up. So those are the reasons why you might get water deficits in different parts of the world. These differences in supply and demand don't just happen on a global uh, scale, but they also happen on national scales. So if we look at here at this map of water stress in England, in the north, we can see that we have generally a surplus of water. And this is because the supply is very high and the demand is lower. In the southeast, southeast of England, we have the opposite. So we have um, not necessarily a deficit, but we have more of a stress um, in this area uh, because we have the supply is lower than can meet the demand, which is very high. And I'm going to explain in the next uh, section why we get differences in supply and demand in these areas. So we can explain some of these uh, regional patterns of water uh, surplus and deficit uh, in the UK by looking at rainfall maps and urban area maps. And I'm going to have a look at a couple of areas to try and explain them. So um, I've circled two areas. Um, on the, my right map, I've got all the major urban areas. And on my left map, I've got uh, the average rainfall you get in areas of the UK. So I've tried to circle the rough area, the same areas. And if I look on my left map, I can see with these dark blue areas that there is lots of rain. And that means in these areas, we are going to have a high supply of water. But if I also look at my urban areas, which is I've tried to circle the same area, we can see that there is few major urban areas. And there, because of that, that means the demand is going to be low. That's why in this kind of west region and northern region, especially in Scotland, um, we are going to get um, a, a large area of surplus or 
positive water balance, but we're also going to get, um, as we looked at that last map, low water stress because we have got enough water, but the demand isn't very high. However, if I look down in the southeast of England, where I have just circled those two areas, we can see on this left uh, map that there is a very low supply because we're not getting much rainfall. And however, we have got one of the biggest urban areas and therefore, because we've got the capital here, and therefore we have high demand. Therefore, this is going to be an area of um, probably not deficit, but we're going to have an area of high water stress because we have so much demand, but not the means to meet it. So issues of water supply and demand are something that governments need to think about. And so we don't get headlines like this one over here, um, which says that parts of England are at risk of water short shortages. And so governments are trying to deal with that and they are coming up with water transfer schemes where what they simply do is they get water um, from areas where there is a large surplus and transport it to areas of deficit or areas of low water supply um, and higher demand. And we're going to learn about uh, a, a scheme called the Kilda Water Transfer Scheme. And that is in uh, the north of England. I'll circle it here on the map. And this takes water um, from that western area uh, where there is a higher supply uh, and more surplus and transports it into um, the rivers of the Tyne and the Tees to help supply um, places like Newcastle and Middlesbrough.